So this video is going to be a little different to the usual videos that I make, where in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through an entire day in my life as a security professional working in Melbourne, Australia. So I start off my day at around 7 in the morning where the first thing I like to do is hydrate myself and then comes uh, probably that part of the day which I look forward to the most which is my first cup of morning coffee. After having my morning coffee, I like to spend some time with my plants, watering them. Now, for those who don't know, I am a huge gardening enthusiast. So that is one of my hobbies that I like doing as well. So I like watering my plants, spending some time with them, and then I leave for work. Usually I work in the office around three days a week and the other days are work from home. But when I work from the office, I usually either drive or take public transport. And uh, once I get to the office, I then settle down, get my workstation started up. And uh, what I like doing, the first thing when I start off my day in the office is checking any outstanding tasks from the previous night or the previous day. Because I work for an organization which is basically has a global presence and works around the clock. Therefore, in different time zones, there could be different incidents that arise that I need to look at or work on based on the severity, the priority, etc. And that is what I like doing first. I like clearing all of that out first because I'm pretty sure that there will be a few customers or stakeholders that are looking to get a resolution and uh, we get onto that ASAP so that we can come to a conclusion so that we have a happy customer. Now, because I work primarily in network security, most of my work revolves around firewalls and the security aspect of networks and how to maintain good security standards. Uh, I'll give you an example of what this looks like. Um, one specific scenario was where a customer was trying to access a website and download some files from that website but they were not able to do so. This was tracked by a ticket which was first sent to the layer 1 engineers. Uh, they were not able to fix it so then it was escalated to uh, the level 3 engineers and I work as a level 3 engineer so that was one of my tasks. So my approach to it would usually be straight away now in this case I know that it's probably being blocked by the firewalls. So what I'll do is I'll get the source and destination of this traffic flow, head to uh, the firewalls. Uh, I will use Panorama in this case because Panorama is a device which is used to manage all of your standalone next generation Palo Alto firewalls. So you just log into Panorama, you go into the monitor section, go into the logs, put in the source and destination IP addresses and look, try and see if you find any reason why the traffic is being blocked. In this specific scenario, I can already see that the traffic has been blocked by the Palo Alto firewalls. And the reason is, is because it's classified it as a threat type of traffic. And this happens quite often, wherein you have some traffic which is misdiagnosed or uh, wrongly allocated by Palo Alto to a threat. And in that case, what you got to do is you got to be absolutely sure that this application or file that the users are trying to download is non-malicious. In this case, it belongs to an internal website, which belongs to my organization. So it is fairly clean. So what I'll do is I am going to open a case with the vendor, Palo Alto support in this case, uh, provide all the details to them, state that the traffic is being wrongly classified and it needs to be uh, reclassified correctly so that it's not dropped as a threat by the firewall. Hence, as you can already see in this scenario, it involves a lot of technical troubleshooting. But along with that, you also need to have strong communication skills because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to relay this information back to the stakeholders as well as use uh, this good communication standard to liaise with the vendor's support to come to a resolution as quickly as possible. This was one such example of a ticket that I would work on. Similarly, um, what I would do is clear any other backlog or tickets from the previous night or any outstanding work that I have from a layer three 
support perspective. By the time I do this, responding to emails, uh, speaking to a few of my colleagues, friends, etc., and also sneaking in another cup of coffee, it's almost lunchtime. And um, what I like to do is after having lunch, I like going for a nice little stroll around the Melbourne city, which is very beautiful, has a lot of parks and uh, it's very scenic, gives you a good break. You can stretch your legs, you can refresh your mind. And this is what you should do as engineers. Don't always sit glued to your screen, walk around, stay active because that helps you perform better in your next half of the day. Now, after finishing my lunch and my walk, I usually resume work on project side of things. Now, I specifically work as a projects engineer with some form of layer three support, as I already spoke to you about how I clear that in the first half of the day. But when it comes to project engineers, you've got to work on new solutions, deploying new solutions for your network, deploying new solutions for different customers within your organization. In this specific case, I'm working on a project to replace legacy firewall hardware with the new firewall hardware, which is going to be supported by the vendor. So this involves a lot of network diagrams, network documentation, design, planning, configuring the new firewalls up to the same level as the old firewalls, speaking to stakeholders, arranging testing, etc. And also coming up with a maintenance window in which you can cut over the service from the old firewalls to the new firewalls. And this has to be done in a defined maintenance window, specifically, if I'm being completely honest, probably weekends or after hours in the nights, so that your customers see little to no disruptions or outages. Now, while I was working on this project work, um, I saw a very interesting email that came in from our vendor Palo Alto because what they found was that they were exposed to a very serious vulnerability which had a very high CVSS rating. And what this vulnerability was, was that any firewalls that, let's say, faced the internet for their management connectivity and any user from any network could access uh, the firewalls management plane from the internet, uh, they could, any attacker or hacker could just get privileged access and they could do all sorts of nasty stuff like changing the configs or deleting uh, admin accounts, etc. And this is a catastrophe if it takes place in uh, the real world or if an attacker or a hacker gets access to your firewalls, it could spell doom. Therefore, it's a network security engineer's responsibility to analyze the CVE, see every detail about it, uh, conduct some analysis on your own organization's network, on your own devices and test the different scenarios to check if you are exposed by this vulnerability or not. Now, I already spoke that, you know, how I was working on a project task where I was designing uh, a new solution to be deployed and replace an old solution. But when something like this comes up, this takes absolute priority. Therefore, we put that on the back burner. We focus on this, ensure that our organization isn't affected by the CVE, take the necessary steps in place based on the recommendations provided by the CVE, apply those patches, roll everything out, etc. Once I finish working on this, I then prefer to come back home. And once I get back home, that is when, again, if I see any uh, important emails or tasks that I have to attend to, I probably log in from home for a bit just to uh, finish off any tasks for the day or prepare for the next day. I don't like spending a lot of hours or working, let's say, after your defined working time slot. Therefore, I try winding up by around 5 or 6 p.m. And then after that, I like going either for a run or doing some form of exercise because it's very important to keep yourself fit, especially when you're working in IT. It can get very easy for us to get distracted and just constantly work. But pull yourself out of that bubble, go for a stroll, go for a run, do some form of resistance training. As I said earlier as well, refresh your mind. Your health is the most important thing. And that is what I like doing as well. Once I get a good workout in, I then go and freshen up, take a nice shower. And this is where I then come and focus on my tutoring work. If I've got any classes with any students, I then spend some time, maybe one or two hours conducting those classes or editing videos for YouTube or answering any questions that you guys reach out to me and ask me on LinkedIn. Uh, by the way, for those that have been watching my channel, I've got a playlist 
on how to be a network security engineer in 2025. So do check it out. I'm sure it'll be of a huge uh, benefit to you. After spending an hour or two working on, let's say, tutoring stuff or YouTube, I then like having my dinner. After finishing off my dinner, I like reading a bit. Uh, probably not a lot, uh, maybe 30 minutes. The current book that I'm reading is How to Reset Your Vegas Nerve. But after I finish reading for a bit, I then probably chill, scroll on my phone like, let's say, everyone probably does these days. Watch a few reels on Instagram, speak to a few friends, speak to my family back home. And uh, yeah. By that time, it's the end of the day and I like going to sleep like everyone else. So yeah, there you go, guys. This was a very realistic day in the life of a security professional. If this video has been helpful and it shows you what exactly a network security engineer's day looks like, do hit the like button, guys. Comment what you think about the video, uh, about the audio quality, the picture quality, any feedback that you have for me. I'm going to take everything on board. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.